Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real Batman coming to you once more, this time with a review of Batman Beyond. Now, to be honest, I have purchased and watched the first two seasons of Batman Beyond and have also watched the movie Return of the Joker, the review of which will be coming shortly after. But today, Batman Beyond. Now, to the best of my understanding, this was produced after some pressure was applied to somewhat modernize Batman, as if there was something wrong with the classic Batman. But pressure and money makes you do many things in this industry. So let us take a look at the newly formed and the new look of Batman. It starts off well enough with a very energetic intro, but maybe there's something a little familiar about this when you consider this was in the late 90s and early 2000s. Take a look. After watching Batman Beyond, my conclusion is that this is the worst adaptation of Batman ever. What an absolute disgrace to Kevin Conroy whilst using Kevin Conroy on the show. Let me just explain few of the problems I have had with this. Number one, the new Batman, who is now Terry McGinnis in disguise, is extremely clumsy. And it seems that the writers of the show have almost reverted to using slapstick style humor, but without the laugh track. Take a look at this. This is from what I believe is the very first episode where the new Batman encounters and corners Derek Powers and Mr. Fix while maintaining social distancing nonetheless and was too clumsy to realize that a big bouldering machine just clotheslines him from the back. And as for you, Fix, I'm taking you in for the murder of... Oh! Oh. <laughs> In me power. <laughs> oh, you think that was it? You think this never happens? This happens all the time on this show. This is an episode where Ink supposedly finds the Bat Cave and then squeezes Batman and inserts her head into the new Batman's mouth. Wide. Oh, I'm not done. Here is a lot more. Yeah. He's got the laser too. Even still warm. Now do you believe me? <laughs> Even in the movie Return of the Joker, they revert to slapstick style humor. Flagpole. What did you say? Flagpole. Huh? <laughs> and I'm like, who put such an immature person as Batman where they have to learn on the job? how to be Batman properly, and still, after two seasons, the show went on for three seasons, after two seasons, Terry McGinnis still hasn't figured out how to be the proper Bruce Wayne-style Batman. This is such a downgrade. Let me take you back to this again. He's got the laser too. Even still warm. Now do you believe me? This is how Batman from the classic era would have handled this. Oh, 
Number two, the villains. One of the greatest assets of the classic Batman are its villains. And many, if not most, have said that the greatest roster of villains is in Batman. It's not in Spider-Man. It's not in Iron Man. It's not in the Avengers. It's not in the Flash. It's in Batman. And in Batman Beyond, what do we get? Extremely cheap knockoffs of some of the greatest villains you will ever see in a cartoon adaptation of perhaps one of the greatest comics of all time. Let me explain. In Batman, the animated series, you had the Mad Hatter. In this one, you have a disgruntled school counselor called Spellbinder. In Batman, you had Clayface, someone who had a fantastic debut episode. In this one, you have a water-soluble version of the mask called Ink. Are you out of your mind? Somebody stop me. In the classic Batman, you have Catwoman, who has achieved legendary status due to the chemistry, the chasing, and the interaction with Batman. And by the way, the voice acting for Catwoman in the original animated series is absolutely phenomenal. It not only holds up, but it even outshines much of the female voice actresses of the modern day. In Batman Beyond, you have a person in a heist gang called Ten. And this dynamic works less because Batman in the original cartoon was single and was supposedly a player. This one, Terry McGinnis already has a girlfriend with a weird haircut. So this one, the dynamics are a little off. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you have Blight. Batman Beyond's version of Radioactive Man from The Simpsons. You want to talk about poison? <laughs> I am poison! Nah, dude. You're Radioactive Man. Up and at em. Up and at them. Up and at em. Up and at them. Up and at em. Up and at them. And to show their lack of creativity, they brought back Mr. Freeze as early as, I believe, episode 5 of season 1. How desperate can you get in terms of ideas? And anyway, if he's still hiding in Gotham, he's fried. What makes you so sure? We're having a heat wave, Mr. Powers. Today it hit 70. Really? 70 degrees Fahrenheit is a heat wave. Where is Gotham located again? Is it in the North Pole? But it's all right. You can always cool down with a ginger ale. Boiling hot Texas style ginger ale. But the greatest insult of them all is this cartoon's version of the Joker. Mark Hamill portrayed a Joker that would make the Joker arguably the greatest villain of all time. Yes, greater than the Green Goblin, greater than Thanos, greater than Kang the Conqueror, greater than Doctor Doom. Mark Hamill did justice to the Joker. And what does Batman Beyond do? Batman Beyond turns the Joker into an F-grade biker gang who sometimes possibly even resorts to pickle jokes and who also gets beaten up by an old man with a walking cane. Let's put a smile on his face. Let's put a smile on that face. No, Batman Beyond, you do not get to use Heath Ledger's line. Rest in peace. You do not get to use Heath Ledger's line, especially with the worst of the Batman Beyond villains, let alone the worst of 
all Jokers ever conceived. The weakest of all the Batman Beyond villains, which in itself is an extreme downgrade of what Batman villains used to be, are the Jokers. You do not get to use that line. And just to reiterate, this is this cartoon's version of Joker. <laughs> A disgrace to the name Joker. My point being is that all the villains in this cartoon are absolute inferior knockoffs of the original for the most part. Even this cartoon version of Bane who uses a topical screen version of Venom is so stupid. And they made Bane look kind of stupid anyway towards the end in the original Batman the Animated Series. Number three. General lack of creativity. And this generalized deficiency leads to deficiency in the writing, deficiency in even the title screen, deficiency even in the reveals. So many deficiencies. Let me explain. In the Armory episode, Batman chases after Armory whilst being fully visible, whereas he has shown that he has the capability of making himself invisible. But I guess the episode trailer needed him to be visible for the trailer at least. <laughs> You can run, but you can't glide. And is Armory using a chewing gum gun to stop Batman? Another of the deficiencies is even shown in the title screens. That's right. When Batman the Animated Series had classic artwork depicting the titles of their episodes, taking even great care in that detail. Batman Beyond gives you what? The title of the episode in quotation marks. Way to go, Batman Beyond fans. This is the Batman you want remade? Or take this episode, for example. This is where some guy called Robert Vance scans his brain onto a computer and then later on gets activated and hacks the bat suit, taking it over like some Fallout 4 Sentinel AI power armor from the Creation Club DLC. And Terry McGinnis decides to show that it is the man that makes the bat suit or whatever. Some stupid cliche nonsense. So he dons Nightwing's eyewear takes the belt, the utility belt, and then proceeds to infiltrate the facility. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, does not know which tool to use to infiltrate a building through a ventilation shaft. How stupid can you get? Oh no, I have locked myself out of the back apartment. What am I gonna do? Hmm. No? Hmm. Even in the opening episodes, which some idiots have dubbed as the best Batman Beyond episodes. And honestly, if Rebirth and Rebirth Part 2 are the best Batman Beyond episodes, then I am completely satisfied with the fact that Batman Beyond does not get any love. And this is absolutely deserved that Batman Beyond deserves to be buried and not get any love. Believe me, in this episode, Look how easily Terry McGinnis finds the Batcave. A bat? I'll get you out of there, just don't bite me. Huh?
ladies and gentlemen it was that easy in batman beyond all terry mcginnis had to do is release a locked bat which led him to the bat cave take this concept finding out bruce wayne's identity how it would have played out in batman the animated series let me give you an example let's take you back to an episode where dr hugo strange creates a mind reading device and uses that on bruce wayne to find out that he is batman then dr hugo strange contacts the joker penguin and two face to sell off this information to the highest bidder only to be thwarted by batman himself when he switched the tapes and replaced it with batman imagining that hugo strange is talking about double crossing the villains fellow miscreants we've been had i'm going to use your head for a bowling ball strange get him brilliant brilliant animation brilliant delivery just brilliance anyways the episode ends with the bad guys being captured hugo the strange confronting the batman really with Wayne. his hypothesis on what happened and then batman that, and bruce thoughts. wayne appearing true? together simultaneously what secret is that that's right no, batman was so awesome. protective that even someone who found out his identity who batman did not want him to have this information Batman arranged for Bruce Wayne and Batman to appear at the same time in beyond it is so lazy that the identity of Bruce Wayne being Batman has absolutely no value number 4 but one of the most insulting degrading humiliating episodes to ever be associated with batman is egg babies this is an episode that involves batman beyond that's right a batman taking care of a robotic baby shaped like an egg ah oh. terry mcginnis and blade summer They're babies, Mr. McGinnis. You must be gentle with them. How do I turn it off? You can't. But you can quiet it down by rocking it, just like a real baby. Yeah, McGinnis, get with the program. <laughs> Good Lord! Save me, bad credit card. Never leave the cave without it. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I found something that makes the bat credit card look much better in comparison. Jingle bells, Batman smells Robin laid an egg. Is that the egg? Is that the egg? Is that why Robin became so pissed off and became Nightwing? It's because Batman beyond stole his egg. Daddy's got to go to work now. And to top it all off, Guess who the villain of this episode is? An ex-convict mommy in her 50s who is trying to steal the exact same jewels that she did with her husband. Her husband who probably went and got hooked with another woman. This 50-year-old woman ends up beating Batman Beyond, the Batman that is supposed to have enhanced strength in his suit i believe is supposed to be able to lift a thousand pounds it's mine needs to be stimulated too and according to this printout only one baby was fully stimulated the one belonging to terry and blade congratulations mr mcginnis who knew you turn out to be such ideal father material <laughs> but just like any other show that is overrated this show also takes a shot at someone else Harper, miserable recreant. If you wanted to face me, do it yourself. Don't involve these deluded lame brains. Why have you brought him here? 
What should we have done? Kill him. But the Sentry's code of honor. Like he knows anything about honor. Silence! Ah! He is the Dark Regent. He must be destroyed. As if the Star Wars reference wasn't obvious enough. But even in one of the better episodes, they make a distinction between the character of Old Man Bruce versus Batman Beyond. Just notice how calm and collected he is in this episode. I'm here for him. The rest of you can go. Who is that man? Where the fuck are you going? Nobody's carrying this room. They're dangerous. I'm no more. Just get out of there. Get out of here. You're a mean old man, you know that. Mm hmm. And what are you? Your worst nightmare. You have no idea what my nightmares are like. wait till after the hors d'oeuvres way to ruin a good episode with some very corny dialogues number five and just to make my point even more clear in conclusion i'm going to use an episode from the classic animated series just to drive home the cool factor of the classic batman compared to batman beyond and by the way, yes, it was a kid's cartoon, but some explicit themes will be shown. So you have been warned. This is an episode called The Ultimate Thrill, where I believe an original villain for this season called Roxy Rocket or something, who is actually a very good ex-stunt woman, is now carrying out high-risk thefts and robberies using her stunt skills to her advantage even manages to evade the batman towards the beginning of the episode but batman smartens up and catches up to roxy rocket and now ladies and gentlemen take a look at this scene very carefully the dialogues the interactions the directing even what is supposed to symbolize watch it very carefully. I love a man with staying power. Unfortunately, it's the third act climax, and you're not in the final scene. I guess nothing lasts forever. What are you doing? Testing your true metal, Batman. Jump now and you'll land in the water. 
And if I don't? You'll either crash into the canyon wall or hit the ground ahead. So will you. <laughs> now you understand the game. Time is running out. Better make your move. I thought you enjoyed risk. Oh, baby, you're the best. The ultimate thrill, the final stunt. Me and you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! I knew it would be this way. The final stunt is the best. Beast mode! Absolute beast mode, yeah! Now that's what I call a man and a half, and then another man put on top of it, yeah! This ultimate man, where you can make a female stunt woman climax right over the top, just by looking at her, yeah! I get it. We live to play another day. W what's this? My kind of game. And you lost. Right on, Batman. And yes, this is exactly what is happening, okay? Let's not pretend this is not happening, what I'm about to show you. How do we go from a Batman that can do this? I thought you enjoyed Risk. Yeah, you fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass pussy. Give me everything you got for this wet ass pussy. Do this! And as for you, Fix, I'm taking you in for the murder of the- oh! He's got the laser too. Even still warm. Now do you believe me? Um, sorry? So, to sum it all up, no, you know what? Let's bring back Mark Hamill, the greatest Joker of all time, to sum this all up. Take it away, Joker. For some clown who thinks he's Batman, I am Batman. Oh, that's a joke, right? Batman finally told a joke. Indeed it is. Batman Beyond is a joke. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons. And I will see you in the next review of the Batman movies.